Autolite and its 96,000 dealers present Suspense. Tonight, Autolite brings you a transcribed tale of violence and tenderness. A story we call The Gift of Jumbo Brannigan, starring Mr. William Bendix. Before our play begins, here is a word about Autolite from a good friend of ours. Hello, everybody. This is Harlow Autolite Wilcox, singer of superlatives about those sturdy, stout, supremely scintillating stars of action and accuracy, world-famous Autolite spark plugs. The spark plugs that are ignition engineered to work as a team with your car's ignition system. When you replace worn-out spark plugs with ignition engineered Autolite spark plugs, that fickle, finicky, and faltering engine will happily hum and gleefully give smoother performance, quick starts, gas savings. All mighty important advantages to every car owner. That's why we say spark plugs should be regularly and carefully checked by your friendly Autolite spark plug dealer. He'll check your spark plugs with the exclusive Autolite plug check indicator. That's a special device that tells the right story for your type of driving. And if cleaning or adjustments are needed, he has the equipment to do the job quickly and efficiently. And remember, too, your Autolite spark plug dealer is the only one who can offer you your choice of Autolite standard or resistor-type spark plugs. So go to your Autolite spark plug dealer soon, because you're always right with Autolite. And now, with the gift of Jumbo Brannigan and the performance of Mr. William Bendix, Autolite hopes once again to keep you in... Suspense! Jumbo, come on. Hurry it up. Shut up. You act like an amateur. Talk and talk and... Oh, that lousy, no-good bit. I know I should have picked it myself instead of letting a stupid kid do it. You pushed it too hard. That's why I broke it. I never pushed a drill too hard in my life. Come on, the other bit. Come on, Froggy. We ain't got all night. Here, here, Jumbo. Don't get nervous. You're the ones having cat fits. It's the last bit we got. I'll handle it like a baby. We almost threw anyhow. A couple of minutes, we're going to be three of the richest men in town. Rocky, watch how you juggle that soup. Don't worry. If I drop it, you won't see us change. Well, maybe I ought to hit the new watchman again. He might come around. Ain't you never been on a job before? Yeah, plenty. Well, you don't sound like it. Uh, now we're starting to come through. I'll pour some more water in. We can't break now. Don't worry. Jump up. Hold it a minute. What's the matter now? I think I heard something. Listen. I don't hear nothing. Well, come on, come on. Let's finish up. Well, you wasted ten seconds talking... Come on, baby, get through it. Get through it. The alarm. The alarm. Jumbo, you set the alarm off. We'll never get out of here now. We're fried. I dropped the drill and listened. The alarm was sounding in my head like cannon fire. And I knew the next thing we'd hear would be size 12 brogans pounding up the stairs with cops' feet in them. You'd think that with 25 years at the business behind me, I'd know better than a trip an alarm, wouldn't you? Three weeks of freedom was all I'd been able to snatch. It didn't feel like three weeks, but more like three minutes ago, somebody called my name out. Francis Augustus Brandon. <laughs> all right, all right. Knock Augustus. off, you guys. Augustus. Knock off. <laughs> Benzie, you've been a trustee a long time. So maybe you'd trust me to rearrange your face. The name's Jumbo. Jumbo Brennigan. Don't get sore, Jumbo. Only use your whole name for a joke. <laughs> This is quite an occasion. Oh, okay, Benzie. I guess this is the one day I should let you have your fun. Warden sent me to get you. He's waiting. Uh, you hear that, you failures? The warden's waiting for me. So long, guys. Take care of yourselves. So long, Tiger. So long, Peanuts. So long. Greatest bunch of no good bums in the world. Yeah. Oh, how I've been waiting for this. For all my papers right and everything. You're as clean as a snowflake, Jumbo. Your release is signed, train tickets on the warden's desk. All you gotta do is tell him goodbye. Goodbye, warden. Goodbye, warden. <laughs> you know, I might even say something nice to the creep. Insult him for me, will you? I'm in no position to do it myself. All right, inside. Yeah, just a second. Oh. Yes, what is it? Brannigan's ready to leave, sir. 
Well, Brannigan. Oh, hello, Warden. Nice day, huh? Beautiful. That'll be all, Vinzy. Yeah, bye, Jumbo. I'll keep it canned in the window for you. Yeah, don't bother. Great guy. <clears throat> How old are you, Brannigan? Uh, 51, I think, Warden. How many years have you spent in prison? Well, counting reform school and everything, uh, 25 years. Half your life. Don't you think you've been a failure long enough? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Warden, you're right. Those long nights back in there really pounded a lesson into this thick skull. From now on, I'm going to be known as Honest Jumbo Brennigan. Well, you'll have a chance to prove that. I wonder if you can. What do you mean by that crack? Have you forgotten about your boy? Oh, yeah, the kid. Well, I haven't heard much from him, and I don't even know what he looks like. How he looks isn't important. It's how he feels. Put yourself in his place. He's only 14 years old. He spent 10 of those 14 years as a ward of the state. Never had a family or a chance. Oh, poor kid. Too bad his mother didn't live. I wish there was something I could do for him, but I guess there ain't. Now, here's where we start putting some lives back together, Jumbo. There is something you can do for that kid. I'm going to tell you just what it is. When you get outside, you're going to take that kid, and the two of you are going to live as father and son. But wouldn't We've already got an apartment for you. The rent's paid for six months. We've gotten you an honest job. Doing what? Working in a department store. A Mr. Bishop, who does rehabilitation work, has agreed to take you on. Oh, that's, uh, that's swell. The parole office, the Child Welfare Bureau, and the police department are going to keep tabs on you both until you straighten out your life. And Brannigan, you step out of line once and you'll wish you'd never been born. Oh, Warden, I told you. I'm going out of here and I'm going to go straight. I'm planning to make a decent home for myself and I'll be glad to make a home for that kid. He won't have to worry and you won't have to worry. Nobody will. Because Jumbo Brannigan's going to live an honest life from here on out. Is that clear? That's clear, Brannigan. You have my best wishes. We walked to the gate, arm in arm. And I could see that he really fell for that big speech of mine. <laughs> I should have been a politician. I almost fell for it myself. It was so good. I wasn't going to go to work in any department store. At least any longer than I had to. I was heading right back where I belonged, over to the south side of town. And I was going to go into business for myself. Jumbo Brennigan for hire. Knights. And then all of a sudden I was outside. Free. I spit on the sidewalk, stretched my arms out wide, and took a good deep breath of that sucker's air. Jumbo. Jumbo. Uh, it's me, the kid. Not the kid. Mine? Sure. Didn't they tell you I was going to be waiting for you out here? Well, uh, no, I, I guess they forgot. Well, you think I'd let you down? My old man, Jumbo Brannigan? Oh, you're kind of skinny. Oh, I've been a little off my feet. You know, the excitement of you getting out. Well, nothing to get excited about. I've been out before. We're going to live together, huh? Have our own place, huh? You're all right, kid, so we're going to live together. But get this straight. I'm making the rules. You keep out of trouble. You get in by 10 o'clock at night. And if you call me daddy once, I'll loosen a few of those baby teeth. Okay, Jumbo. We'll do anything you say. Anything you say. Uh, you don't know how good it is to see you. My old man. We took the train into town. I had never seen a kid so excited or anybody so taken with me. He looked at me like I was an all-American fullback who just scored the winning touchdown for Podunk. And the next morning, I reported for work at Peterson's department store, a big, lush joint. I met the manager, Mr. Bishop, the jerk the warden had told me about. Well, Brannigan, it's nice to have you join our little family. Oh, thank you, sir. It was nice of you to do something for me. I'm not doing much for you, Brannigan, but you're doing something for me. You're filling a necessary job in my department store. I don't know much, but I'll do my best. I'm sure you will. I believe in the basic honesty of the human being. And so far, in this little rehabilitation venture, I haven't been disappointed. The parole board felt that if you had uh, some definite responsibility, you and your boy would make out all right. Oh, I'll do my best, sir. You don't have to call me, sir. Just call me Bishop, as everyone else does. I'm going to put you down in the shipping room to start. Suit you? Oh, fine, sir. Then you can move up into any job you want. 
Who knows, someday you might have my job, manager. Oh, just any job would make me happy, sir. Uh, Bishop, as long as it's honest. That's the kind of talk I like to hear. I'm pitting my faith on you, Brannigan. Anytime you have a problem or get the urge to, well, you know, well, come to me directly. And remember, we work on the honor system. Uh, honor system. Uh, it suited me just fine. Inside of an hour, I'd cased the layout and found the main safe. It was on the second floor, and it was so beat up I could have opened it left-handed with a sectional jimmy. Oh, what a setup. It was the first time I'd ever been paid to case a joint by the very people I was going to knock off. Well, three weeks went by while I tossed crates and boxes around in the shipping room, playing the innocent-eyed ex-con. What I was really doing was mapping the place, right down to the tacks and the rugs. And then I decided it was time to operate. The kid? I didn't even think about him. I broke my parole by going down to the roundhouse, a bar I used to hang out in. Jumbo! I wanted to hear you all the way down to the parole office, nuthead. Oh, yeah. I got excited seeing you, Jumbo. Oh, well, don't lose your head. Oh, uh, the usual, Jumbo? Yeah. <coughs> what happened to Stinger McClure? Uh, the Stinger? Yeah. Uh, he was picking somebody's pocket on the subway and the door closed on his arm. The way that undertaker fixed him up, you wouldn't think he had a scratch on him. Ha! It's good to see you back, Jumbo. Julius, I've been kind of out of touch with things. Uh, maybe you can help me. I'll uh, try. I need a couple of guys, Julius. A good electrician who knows the wires, a lookout, and a small guy who can squeeze in through a ventilator. Let me see. Anybody special in mind? I was thinking of Ralph Petrucci and Froggy Quinn. Those guys are around. They haven't been down here. Not in the dog's age. Any chance of getting a line on them? Yeah, I got some ears I can mutter into. <coughs> Might be kind of hard, but uh, I'll try. Okay, Julius, I'll take care of you. Uh, how about another splash in the glass? Coming up. Also on the house. Jumbo, I've been looking all over for Kid, you. Kid, what do you think you're doing here? What's important? Look, it's after 10 o'clock and you're supposed to be in bed. That's what's important. Yeah, so are you, too. You're on parole. But I'm going right home, Jumbo, honest. I just want you to come with me. I, uh, I got a surprise for you. What surprise? Well, I can't tell you here, but it's really big. All right, kid, let's get it over with. He led me out of the bar and up the street like he just discovered oil in our kitchen. I couldn't figure out what the surprise could be. And when we got to the apartment and opened the door, you could have knocked me over with a baby's rattle. The two guys I asked Julius, the bartender, to scout for me were sitting on the sofa, big as the ears on a bull. Ralph Petrucci and Froggy Quinn. Oh, here he is, fellas. How are you, Jumbo? <laughs> Welcome home. Oh, hello, Ralph. But how did... Give me a minute, Jumbo. Froggy Quinn, I can't <laughs> believe it. How did you guys get here? How did you know? I got him, Jumbo. I knew you was looking for him. You knew I was looking for them? Sure, for the job. <laughs> what a kid, huh? What job, kid? Come on, tell me, what job? The one we're gonna pull. Now, uh, wait a minute. Let me get this straight. We're not pulling any job. Sure we are, Jumbo. Let me tell him, Ralph. Who do you think got you the parole? Who do you think got you that job in the department store? This apartment. Who? Me, that's who. I went up to that creep, Mr. Bishop, and cried my eyes out like a little baby, telling him how much I needed my old man, and wouldn't he help me? Kid, you don't know what you're talking about. And furthermore, we're not going to knock off the department store the way you've been thinking. Who says we're not? I do. We're clipping the loan company next door. That's where they keep their money nights, and that's where the real pile is. Now, here's a plan. Now, hold on a minute, kid. You going crazy or something? He knows what he's doing. Well, there's not going to be any job like this. And there's not going to be any kid like that in on it. Yes, there is, Jumbo. With or without you. I've been planning this job three years. And I'm going to go on it. Are you? I stood there looking down at that 90-pound skinny little kid. My own flesh and blood. Planning a job like a hard guy who'd been in the rackets all his life. I felt like batting him right down through the floor. But everybody stood there staring at me, waiting for my answer. And all of a sudden, I knew what it was going to be. Because I didn't like the looks of this job. What was that, Jumbo? You heard me, Froggy. Count me out. I don't want any part of it. Jumbo, you're nervous. You just got out. 
Now, we'll all pretend we didn't we didn't hear what you said. A chance to say something else. Jumbo, I thought you'd be proud. I planned it. I said I want no part of it. Now don't waste time beating your gums. What's the matter, Jumbo? Don't you trust your own kids? Save that drug guy for some stupid cop when you're standing in a lineup. Jumbo Brennigan don't trust nobody. Jumbo, you're forgetting the kid here's got a real head on him. He, he even sprung you. I've already thanked him. So long. Wait a minute. Oh. Oh, it's going to be that way, huh, Ralph? Yeah, Jumbo, it's that way. Now, while you're watching the gun, let me explain something to you. Before the kid could get in front of that parole board, he had to hire a longmouth, and that longmouth charged five grand. Me and Froggy got it up. And that means we sort of got an interest in you. Is that right, kid? Sure it is. We got you out to pull this job tonight. And it's going to be pulled tonight. We can't get nobody else to stand in for you. I mean it, Jumbo. Five grand don't grow on trees, so just try to walk out of here. I'll kill you. Right in front of your own kid. Autolite is bringing you Mr. William Bendix with Tommy Bernard in The Gift of Jumbo Brannigan. Tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. I was hooked. Oh, I wasn't worried about the heater Petrucci was dangling around on his finger or the way Froggy was sliding around in back of me holding his shiv with a trick blade. I could have given both of them plenty of trouble. But I began to look at it in another way. My right, Jumbo, what do you say? Well, you can put the Betsy away. I'm in. <laughs> what did I tell you guys? He's the best girl in the business, my old man. You'll have a chance to prove it. Jumbo, there's 75 grand stashed in that loan company safe. Just waiting for you to blow it out. And that's why we have to do it tonight, Jumbo. They got all the receipts in for the tax people. Yeah, come on, come on. Let's get down to business. Yeah? <clears throat> here, here, here's the layout. Well, let me look at it. Yeah. How do we get in? Who's going to do the skylight part? That's where the kid fits in. Only we don't need a skylighter. I just get under the Adam Street entrance, see? And I stand there and bore my eyes out. The watchman will see me through the glass. There's only one on duty at 11.30. What are you giving me? Jumbo, I've been selling papers on that corner for three months. It's a cinch, like I said. The watchman will come out and wonder what's the matter with me. And you guys will go in. <laughs> Is that for an angle, Jumbo? Well, I gotta get some tools. Hmm, don't worry, Jumbo. I already got them. Look. Soup drills, fuses, torch, everything. Uh, well, all right, you guys case on out of here. What? Look, I said Breeze. I want to talk to my kid. Okay. Don't make the mistake of changing your mind. Ralph, you can push me only so far and I'll beat it. Jumbo, I think the luckiest thing that ever happened in my life was being your son. You think so? Well, I'm bound to be a big timer like you before I'm 17. Think of all the things I'm going to learn from you. Will you show me how to do a jam blast tonight? Yeah, uh, sure. Sure, kid, anything. Something on your mind? Huh? Huh? No. Uh. No, I'm just thinking over this job. You always got to think them out good. I'm learning already. Maybe I'll grow up to be just like you, huh? Would you like that? Would I? Why, you got everything. Think of all the big dough you handled in your time. And look at the friends you got. Yeah. And Ralph and Froggy says there's no one can touch you in your line. They're right, no one. Uh, tell me about the Siemens National, will you? The Siemens National. You heard about that? Sure, I heard about it. And I heard about the Daily Smith thing in Denver. And the neat switch you pulled up in Montreal. Oh, sounds like a history book on me. <laughs> Wait till you see this. A scrapbook, Jumbo. I got all your clippings. From the first time they nailed you on the St. Louis thing. St. Louis. I was 15. Yeah. And right down to the Akron, Ohio caper. Boy, was that something. Yeah. Kid. What? You believe me when I tell you something? I know what kind of guy you are. You wouldn't kid me. Sure, I believe you. Well, then pay attention tonight on the job. Do like I say? Sure, Jumbo. You're the boss. Anything you want. This is your first time. No mistakes. No mistakes. Wait till you see me in action. You'll be proud of me, like I'm proud of you. Just watch. Yeah, kid. I'll be watching. I'm, 
I'm glad you aren't sore about me lining up this thing. Getting hold of Froggy and Ralph and all. No, no hard feelings, kid. I'm not sore one bit. We all started out at a quarter after 11. Ralph and Froggy were nervous. The kid acted like an old trooper on opening night. We stood in a doorway while he went into his act. The watchman opened the door. Oh, what's the matter, Sonny? What are you crying for? Huh. I got no place to go. No place to go? Oh, but you're only a kid. Where's your mother and father? I don't have any, mister. I'm all alone. I'm afraid. Well... I shouldn't do this, but... Shut up. Get back inside. What? Make one sound and I'll blast your head off. Froggy? Yeah. His gun. Got it. Now inside. The street's all clear, Jim. You sure? Like a dance hall Sunday morning. Let me take care of this guy. I'll do it. Yeah, now, look here. Here. You hit it kind of hard, Jumbo. What's the matter? No guts? Froggy, tie him up. Oh, okay, Jumbo. Then gag him. Yep, right. Ralph, the shades. Okay, Where's he alone? I told you, you don't have to worry a thing about that, Jumbo. You let me do the thinking. It's by the office door. Huh. I wonder if he's dead. Well, the guard just made his call in. We got 15 minutes to crack it. D- do you think we can do it, Jumbo? You th- think we can? All right, yellow belly, this is where you get off. Get off? Yeah, outside. Go on, get out of here. <laughs> but, Jumbo, what's the matter? What did I do? Your dumb little bonehead. Anybody could have set this cracker box up. Now get out of here. I waited a long time for this. I won't go. I thought we were pals. And you you hit me. You're kind of hot on a kid, ain't you? Keep your mouth shut or you'll get the same thing. We can't have him hanging around. I won't go. You can kill me first. Oh, no. You won't. You won't throw me out. I want to be in on the job. I want to be in. Now get away from here. Or you'll burn up the whole thing with your ball and... Jumbo! Now, let's get to the men's work. The tin can was an antique, but it was tough. I worked as fast as I dared. Ralph and Froggy helping me, but the drills kept breaking off. Ralph was nervous and Froggy was juggling the nitroglycerin in a way that set us all on edge. I was using my last drill bit when the job came to a sudden end. The alarm! The alarm! Jumbo, you set the alarm off. We'll never get out of here now. Froggy, put that nitro down. Okay, but I'm blowing. All right, everybody, put up your hands. Stay where you are. Ah, nobody's going to take Froggy, me. put that gun down. You won't buy me that easy. Ralph, get out of my way, Jumbo. Get back. Ralph. Ralph. You... You really lost us. Is that all, Brannigan? That's all, Father. They go, te, absolvo. The nominee, Padre, is... Let me through, let me through. That's my old man there. Jumbo. What's the matter, kid? Ain't you ever seen a guy lie in a gutter and die? I thought... I thought you'd been around. It happens lots of times to guys like me. You can do it yourself someday. Just keep on the way you're going. Jumbo. Jumbo, I was going to learn things from you. You can still learn things. After I'm gone, study that scrapbook. Look at the pictures in it of me in and out of jail. Pictures like the ones they're taking of me right now. They ought to be swell for you. Go on, get away from me. Get away from me. And don't forget the way you saw me dying, will you? Don't forget. Because if you're as dumb as I've been, you're going to end up the same way. <laughs> Kid, take a good look at me. Was that the best way? It was the the only way. Maybe he understands now. (laughs) Hiya, Captain Cross. Thanks for answering my phone call. You wouldn't have been hit, Jumbo, if Petrucci hadn't tried to run. That's all right. Just saved everybody a lot of trouble. Jumbo, why did you tip me off in advance that you were going to pull a job? The Padre here can tell you, Captain. It was a... 
a little gift I arranged for my my kid. Then the God of all summoned the tongue, Deus, Pathos, Phyllis, a spirit of Santos. Amen. Suspense, presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mr. William Bendix. This is Harlow Wilcox again to tell you that Autolite makes over 400 fine products for cars, trucks, planes, and boats in 28 plants from coast to coast. These include complete ignition systems used as original factory equipment on many leading makes of our finest cars. Generators, coils, distributors, electric windshield wipers, voltage regulators, wire and cable, starting motors, and many more. They're all engineered to fit together perfectly, work together perfectly, because they're all part of the Autolite team. So, friends, don't accept electrical parts supposed to be as good. Ask for and insist on Autolite original factory parts at your neighborhood service station, car dealer, garage, or repair shop. Remember, you're always right with Autolite. Next week on Suspense, our star will be Mr. Ronald Coleman in Vision of Death. And in weeks to come, you will hear such famous stars as Mr. Van Johnson, Miss Joan Crawford, and Mr. Jack Carson. All on Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music composed by Lucian Morawieck and conducted by Lud Bluskin. Portions of this program were transcribed. In tonight's play, Tommy Bernard was Young Brannigan, Jay Novello was heard as Froggy, and Ed Max was Ralph. Others in the cast were Leo Cleary, Joseph Kearns, Herb Butterfield, Junius Matthews, and Charles Calvert. The Gift of Jumbo Brannigan was written for suspense by E. Jack Newman and John Michael Hayes. William Bendix may be heard on his own show, The Life of Riley, sponsored by Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer. And remember, next week on Suspense, Mr. Ronald Coleman, as a mind reader who discovers his nightclub act is not a fake, a story we call Vision of Death. You can buy world-famous Autolite resistor-type or standard-type spark plugs, Autolite stay-full batteries, Autolite electrical parts at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night. Today, the three major objectives of your Red Cross are the servicing of our armed forces everywhere, the training of defense emergency units, and the providing of blood to both the civil and military. Donate your time or money to the Red Cross. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>